My name is Monika Weiss. Um, I am a transdisciplinary artist um, living in Chestertown and New York City, and I'm also um, assistant professor at the Department of Art and Art History, Washington College. Teaching has a very special, um, a special dimension to me. I grew up in a uh, in a family and in a country and in, in a kind of universe where teaching was um, expected from someone in the arts, whether it's music or visual arts, and it was expected as something you give back. So it was sort of like a vocation, something noble to do, something to do, and something that was very respected. So I still have somewhere there in my memory and in my intentions, I have that memory of it. So first and foremost, teaching. And then second, of course, you know, where you teach. And I think that the place itself, um, in a way, seduced me when I first arrived here. And it was not even because of the landscape or the cornfields or the forests or the geese or something. This, this is something I've discovered later, but it was the people. I met several people right away um, and it felt like family or something like that. <laughs> So it was the people, but I, I often think of Chestertown and Washington College as part of the larger world. Um, and because of my, uh, my understanding of the world as one, that unity kind of comes first. And maybe that's because we're living in the, in the era of internet, or I don't know what it is, but um, I, don't, I don't think of it as absolutely separate from other places. In terms of my own projects, which are very often immersive in nature, meaning uh, these are installation works which have, for, for example, projected video and sound composition as an environment to which you enter. And for example, my recent show in Warsaw was basically several projections in several rooms and several sound compositions, so it was like a journey. So I often encourage people to not to have any assumptions and to basically leave the assumptions at the entrance to an exhibition. Mm. Assumptions, by assumptions I mean what people usually think of traditional art, you know, that there is a room with uh, framed pieces, two-dimensional work, that maybe is going to depict something very spe specific. Um, and how about if you enter a contemporary art exhibition such as mine and, and you consider it um, a music or you consider it poetry, um, a project as a poem? and allow the unexpected to enter your consciousness. To experience my work, uh, because it's time-based media, you actually need some time. You have to spend a little bit of time in it. And that creates, uh, it by itself is interesting, because it's not the way we sometimes take in a painting exhibition, where you can basically, you, you shouldn't, but you can run through it and sort of uh, have a, a kind of an, a, a relationship to it already. Uh, the, a relationship with my work requires some effort, some time. Um, and I'm interested in uh, creating works which change and alter our sense of time, or the viewer's sense of time. Um, and that you can do by manipulating the, the way time is uh, shown in the work itself, but also by adding other elements. For example, I compose sound to dislocate the image. They don't come together um, naturally. It's not an illustration, one or another. It's two separate things, but they come together and they create an environment. Um, and it requires a certain type of surrender. Um, maybe perhaps, you know, when we go to a temple of any religion or when we go to um, a classical concert, you know, classical music concert, there is a certain force uh, you know, uh, surrender. We are required to be silent, we have to sit, you know. Maybe cinema has that too a little bit, where there's a period of time where you have to surrender. And either you relax and you take in and you are in this different zone, or your body and your mind refuses and you just have to go or something like that. So there is a little bit of that aspect, but I think that if you do go for this first process of surrendering, then there is a lot that ha can happen and there's a lot of potential. And I build my projects so that they allow a lot of various interpretations. They're not um, uh, what we normally understand as a narrative, you know, like in cinema, uh, or they are not what we normally understand as a typical music, a musical kind of composition. They are in between. They have aspects of narratives and aspects of visual stories and other stories and um, sounds. Um, 
And it's up to you to choose which meaning you wish to surrender to, you wish to surrender to, which experience. It's not only just the meaning in terms of intellectual, it's also um, an experience, emotional, um, embodied, you know, through your body.